Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys? So happy to be here with you guys. I'm excited to bring you a really fun project today. I think you guys are going to love it. I'm still trying to gather a few things, but it's very exciting and very fun. I don't have Jasper today. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> I always forget to mute my um, other iPad so I can see what the camera looks like and all that good stuff. <laughs> How are you guys? Are you guys doing okay? All right, so we are gonna be doing some fun stuff today, but I do have a little bit of housekeeping notes, as always. We'll go through it pretty quickly. Paper pumpkin, you guys know how much I love paper pumpkin. It is um, just such a fun, um, thing to get in the mail. For those of you that are Paper Pumpkin subscribers, if you want the heart boxes, they're still available. Um, so you can grab those, but you have to be a current subscriber to get any add-ons. This was an add-on for the January kit. So I don't know if you guys are interested in those, but you can still grab some of those. The kit for February is that one right there sunshine and smiles it's gonna coordinate with our sweet called what's it called i always forget the names rain or shine sweet that's in the mini catalog let me find it for you so that you guys can see page 51 so this is our our page that has um, the suite of products. So if you have this suite of products, you can do really cool alternates with the products that'll be in the February Paper Pumpkin Kit. You have until the 10th of February to sign up for it if you want it. So um, this is such a cute little sweet collection. You have the paper is just the uh, most adorable paper. The bundle, you have the little bunny. Of course, you know me, I have to have anything that has a bunny because of Jasper. The paper actually has a little piggy and it has a little dog in the paper too. But the main characters from the stamp set are a turtle, a fox, and a bunny. And then um, there's an embossing folder that has raindrops, which is super cute. Um, but the paper pumpkin kit <clears throat> that is going to coordinate with it is called Sunshine and Smiles. And there is going to be an add-on for this kit. You can start ordering the add-on now. But for all my paper pumpkin subscribers that have been with me, I purchased the add-on for you. And I'm going to be putting that in the mail to you with my thank you card for this month. So, um be on the lookout for that card and you're going to get the cute little sunshine and smiles dies here they are one will cut out this cute little frog and one will cut out this little set of flowers hi pat welcome thanks for joining the live where are you from hey lynn it's today actually lynn i went this morning i am feeling a little better he said that it should take about you know, seven days or so, and I should be my old self. Um, but yeah, fantastic, right? So Sunshine and Smiles, if you are not a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, we get together the last Friday of the month and actually work on our kits together if we have anybody interested in doing so. And when we do get together, it is so much fun. And we can do it in our Facebook group, even if you are not local. So if you're interested in Paper Pumpkin and you want to subscribe under me, I would greatly appreciate that. What you need to do is go to my website, Inky Hands warmhearts.com and when you click on shop there's a section that says paper pumpkin and you can sign up for paper pumpkin under me it's $23.50 a month but during January and February when it's celebration it's a great time to prepay for paper pumpkin because you earn free celebration products by prepaying fantastic Pat Pennsylvania I was raised in Jersey, so Pennsylvania's not too far. 
Although the western side is a little bit far from New Jersey. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Okay, so that's our paper pumpkin this month. The kits collection is always something that's near and dear to my heart. I love having pre-made, pre-designed products to make cards really quickly. And so the latest kit that came out started January 5th. It is an adorable kit. It's only $13 for nine cards. Now it does not have a stamp set or an ink pad, but it does have everything you need to make nine cards, three each of the three each of these three designs right here. So if you haven't placed an order this month, toss that on your order because for $13, you can get nine quick cards and look how cute they are. Then the treats, love treats kit is still available as well. It's $21, but it's 20 treat boxes. So that's quite a good deal also. If you're looking to do some quick treat boxes and this one does come with a stampin' spot and a stamp set that you can use even after all your little treat boxes boxes and all your embellishments and pieces that are in the kit are finished. And then November, we had this Timeless Greetings, which is great masculine cards. This is a pretty cool one. And then October was the Birthday Card Organizer Kit. This is such a great kit because you get an organizer for all your birthdays. One, there's a pocket for you to stick your cards in and you can plan out the year's birthday cards and have them ready to go so that you never have to send a belated birthday card. <laughs> all right, that's all the announcements. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you what we're making. You guys are going to absolutely love this. I can't wait to show you. I am so excited about this card. <laughs> All right. We are using this week the adorable owls for the whole week on my blog. So this is the stamp set that is the main focus. And it is free with a qualifying purchase of $50. So if you purchase $50, anything you want, it could be those kits. It could be um, a prepaid paper pumpkin. Um, you get to pick these owls for free in addition to all the other products that are in this brochure. And this brochure is on my website. In addition to that, if you choose to join my team during the month of January or February, there are three kit options that you can choose from. Um, for $129, you can choose the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and it comes in two colors white or blue here's the boho blue one and you get also $175 worth of products in your kit you're going to get a paper pumpkin so that's an extra $23.50 and no shipping not to mention being on my team and all the perks that come with that um, and then if you don't want a mini machine at all. You can get the starter kit for $99, no mini machine, but you can still get $175 worth of products. So this is a $63 value. And so for $129 to get $175 worth plus a $63 machine plus a paper pumpkin kit for $129 is pretty amazing. So if you're interested, let me know and I'd be happy to help you sign up and join my Inky team. All right, so not only are we using the um, adorable owls, but if you've noticed in the mini catalog, this big spread of products, there were some carryovers from the holiday catalog and one of those carryovers was a set called Perched in a Tree. And it had some really cool dies in that set. We're going to use that as well. So that's on page 74 of the mini catalog. So let me show you the projects. This is probably what you've been waiting for. Like, hurry up. Stop talking so much and show me what you're making. Look at how cute our card is today. So we are doing this night sky. And I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. It's super fun. I used the Stylish Shapes dies, the Perched in a Tree branch. The words are from Perched in a Tree. And I'm going to show you how to do this really cool bow technique here on the corner of 
my um, sentiment. So I hope that you guys like this. If anyone has joined us and wants to say hello, please let me know where you're from. I'd be happy to say hi to you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move our products out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Here is the branch that we are going to need. So I'm going to pull that out. We're also going to need our sentiment die. I've already cut the circle for our card, but this is it. And it cuts out this circle here. And I actually cut it out of my quarter sheet, actually a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of starry sky right there out of the middle. And then we're going to use this piece that's left over. What I love about these dies is that they're stitching even on the piece that's left over as well as stitching on the actual piece. So you're getting double stitching. You're getting it on the, the piece left and the piece that comes out. So you can save this die for another project down the road. We're not going to use that today. But I did want to let you know that I used the largest of those circle dies. I have my stamps already out, so I'm just gonna put these dies to the side. And we will go ahead and get started on our cute card. I'm gonna sit that right there in the corner. Hopefully you guys can see most of it. So I started with a piece of basic white cardstock, and it is five and a half by eight and a half inches. Hi Rita, thanks for joining us. Hey Lee. And we're going to score it at, at the four and a quarter inch mark. And so I'm going to use my bone folder here and we're going to burnish this. And it's going to become our card base. I love using the bone folder. Look at me making messes with my uh, Stampin' Blends. So here is our card. And then this is going to be the piece that goes over the top. All right, so what we're going to do next is I have also cut scrap paper with the same hole and we're going to we're going to use some um blending to get both of these colors onto our white cardstock. So you can see here it has two tones. It has that brighter blue and this darker shading. And I did that with um, the basic gray. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that part. So what I wanna do first is I want to lay my piece underneath. I've already cut it out, but I wanna lay it so that it lines up. And I'm gonna use a temporary adhesive And in the next day or so, I'm going to link you on my website. Just give me a couple days to get it up and running of this adhesive so that you guys can grab it from Amazon if you want to have that. Um, it's not an adhesive that Stampin' Up! sells, but it's a temporary bond, and I really like to use it for things like this. So I'm going to lay that piece down. I'm leaving this the blue piece so that it looks like it's add it on there and I'm going to go ahead and move it out of the way now. So this is going to mark my area that I'm going to do my sponging. Now I do need to be careful because I don't want to sponge on any part of the card that is not covered. So I'm going to put paper there. I'm going to grab another piece of scrap paper or you can just use a larger piece when you cut your hole out and you eliminate this issue. But I'm going to slip those under there so that my whole card is covered. And we're going to start first with our starry sky. So I'm going to grab my starry sky ink and I'm going to grab my blending brush. Now this is one of the smaller blending brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that up and I'm actually going to bring the camera down so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So hopefully I'm not going to make you seasick, but that I can bring it down so that you guys get a, a better idea of what I'm doing. So I'm inking this up in my ink pad and I'm picking up that color. 
and I always start off of my paper and work my way down and into the circle. So I'm gonna start off and then work my way in. And I'm really just depositing that first layer of that blue onto that basic white thick card front. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some more color and we're gonna deepen it. So again, I'm gonna start off, work my way on, Make sure that my middle section is covered. And we're gonna go back in again, I want it darker. Again, off, work my way on. I kinda do the outer edges first and then work my way to the middle and blend that middle section in. Gonna go again. You just keep going until you get it as dark as you want it. You're just layering your color over the top. And with the blending brushes, you get a really soft blending and layering of the colors. We're almost to the color that I want. I think I'm just gonna have to dip maybe once, maybe twice more, but I'm almost there. I want it to be nice and dark. I want it to match this cardstock. All right, so we're gonna come in. And we're gonna layer that color, I think, one more time and we'll be exactly where I wanna be. Let's finish that center. And let's grab more. And this will be our last pass. So we're, again, start off, work our way on. And you can see it darkening with every pass that I give it. All right, so there's my blue color. I'm very happy with that coloring. And I'm gonna work my way on and add a little bit of our basic gray. So I'm gonna grab a different blending brush this time. And this one is also one of the smaller ones. Now I don't wanna use this piece that I have down here because it is has a lot of blue extra blue onto the surface. So I'm gonna lift this off. And I'm gonna attach um, a mask that has the, um, what do you call it? I can't even think of this color name now. <laughs> it's left my brain. Um, basic gray. And I'm just gonna line the edges first. And I just wanna make sure that I get it right there along the edge so that there's no white showing. I want it to be perfectly matched. So that we don't get like a, a little ring of um, basic gray. We want it to be, there we go. We're almost, we're almost right. There we go. Move that one, I think I got it now. All right, so there's our, no, I can't have any bubbling. Come on, lay flat for me, there we go. All right, so once we have our piece on, now this one's not gonna be full coverage. As you can see, I'm gonna bring the card back in. I have three distinct areas that I added that basic gray to. So I added a little color here, a little color here, and another bit of color right there. So we're gonna start up here. And I'm just gonna make sure that I don't do the other side because I think I have a little bit of white showing. I'm not sure why it's not perfect, but life's not perfect, guys. I'm just gonna keep adding till I get a little bit of darkness in that corner. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this side and then I'll move that before I do the blending because I don't want, I want my circle to look really good. So I'm gonna add a little bit on this corner here in this upper section. Go back in. 
And then I'm gonna move my mask and make sure that this bottom section does not have any white showing. There we go. All right. And we'll do this bottom corner. So we'll work our way and add a little darkness right there. You could do this technique to make like a globe or, you know, the world, the earth. All right, that's my three sections of basic gray. So I'm gonna lift that up and then I'm gonna take these pieces up and then you can see that residue right there. That is from the temporary bond adhesive. And so what I like to do is I just take my adhesive remover and I just move it. Now, most of this, remember, is not gonna be covered. We're gonna be covering it up with our um, Starry Sky cardstock. So it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, but it does come up because it's a temporary bond. So we're gonna have this piece come over the top, like so. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually get our night sky effect. So we have the darkness now of the night, but now we're gonna add all the stars. I'm not sure if you can see the iridescence, but trust me, it's there. There's iridescence in the sky. I'm gonna try and see if you can get it if I move it in the light that I have here. But there is sparkle and iridescence happening. I like the smaller brushes when I'm doing tight spots, Lee, and I like the larger when I'm covering like an entire card surface. So both sizes work really well. The small ones are new in the current mini catalog. So we have both now, we have the large and the small. All right, so let me know if you guys can see that iridescence there. Somebody shout out to me and let me know, but I'm trying to get you guys to see it. I can't tell what you can see in the camera, but um, I'm gonna bring our camera back up a little bit and we are gonna work on the splatter effect, I like to call it. <laughs> All right, so hang in there with me as I raise you back up because we need lots of room underneath. So what I'm gonna do next is I have a Stampin' Up brown box, but I use it for splatters. So as you can see there, <laughs> it's just a cardboard box that I like to splatter with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position my cardstock right over the top and try and line it right up so that you can't see any white. And I'm gonna place it in this box. Now, I'm gonna use our Whisper White Reinker. It's our pigment ink, Craft Stampin' Ink. And I'm using a small block. You can use a larger block if you want, but you're going to squeeze just a little bit of it on here. I don't need any now because I have it on the block already, but a little bit more than that if you're putting a drop on there. And then what I like to do is either take a water painter or a paintbrush, your choice, okay? And I'm gonna make sure I can get it. And uh, you see how it's starting to flow? I added some water to it. And now it's very loose. You can see that I'm moving it from the bottom of the block. And now instead of it being thick, I've thinned it out. I'm gonna add a little bit more water with a different paintbrush. I'm just gonna pick it up and let it drip onto there. You can also use a straw to um, add the water, but the drips from the paintbrush are fine as well. And I'm gonna make it just a little bit more watery. There we go. So you can see that it's now kind of like paint. 
And now we're gonna just fling our paintbrush over our card. This is why I have a splatter box. <laughs> so I'm picking up my piece and I'm adding my starry sky to my cardstock. And a couple, like just a squeeze has let me do the two cards so far that that's what I've done. So when I'm happy with the amount of stars in my sky, I can stop. I'm gonna take this block and clean it. I'm gonna grab a baby wipe, which I always keep next to me. You can wipe your block down, clean that. And I'm also gonna, whoops, sorry, I moved my card a little. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna put it in some water. I just have a dish here with water and I'm gonna get the rest of that out. You can see the water is getting milky. Hey John, thanks for joining us. Everybody got quiet. I think they're mesmerized with um, my starry sky. <laughs> So now we're gonna do Wink of Stella and that's gonna give us our iridescence. So what I'm gonna do is take my same block, I'm gonna open my Wink of Stella pen and I'm gonna squeeze it until I get that liquid really nice and flowy. And when you can kind of see that wetness on your block, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's iridescent there. That means that I have enough on the tip of my brush. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the cap and I'm just going to splatter that wink of Stella that is on that tip all over my card, and if I need more, I'm just gonna squeeze it down from the brush onto that block if it's getting dry and not really working. And once I have more on the tip, you can kind of you can kind of see that it's on the tip. I'm gonna do the same thing again, and I'm gonna add more iridescence to my card, and then I'm gonna cap my Wink of Stella, and I'm gonna use my same baby wipe to clean my block and my hands because I may have a little Wink of Stella on me. <laughs> All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it in here and I'm gonna use a heat gun and I'm gonna dry it. Give me a second here to grab my heat gun and I'm gonna bring it over and you can mute me if you don't wanna hear the heat gun, but it shouldn't take too long. And we are gonna dry our, our night sky onto our card. Pigment ink stays wet, unlike the other ink that we use, which is a dye-based ink and it's a water-soluble ink. So, this one stays wet a lot longer, so if you use your heat tool, you can dry it, and then it won't smear on you. That's okay. Thanks for joining us, Eileen. I'm glad you're here. All right. So now that we have it nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove my card out of here. Get rid of my box. All right. Let's do a little stamping for our card now. I'm just gonna, you can see you have that pretty night sky. Can you see the iridescence of the Wink of Stella on there? As well as on here. You have some white and some iridescent sparkly starry skies. So we're gonna move that over our night sky. And we're gonna work on our branch and our little, our little guy and our words. All right, so let's start with the branch 
and our little guy because that's the stuff that we need to die cut out. So I'm gonna bring the camera down again so that you can see me stamp and color. So I'm gonna grab my basic black and my early espresso. I'm gonna start with the early espresso and we're gonna do our branch first. So let's go ahead and ink up our, our branch. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna grab one of these scrap papers from earlier. And that way, if I go off the edge, it's fine. So there is our branch. And then we are going to ink in basic black our owl, and we're using this little cutie right here with the bow tie. And I like to um, ink him like this to make sure that he's nice and saturated and that I didn't miss any spots because I really want him to be nice and dark black for when I do my um, Stampin' Blend. So we're gonna go ahead and get him down. There he is, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And then on the last piece, we're gonna take our, our Starry Sky ink and we're gonna take our words, no matter the season, I'm here for you. I'm gonna ink that up and we're gonna stamp that. Let's flip this paper over and hope that I don't need to flip it again. And I'm just gonna stamp that right there. Thank you, Rita. I hope that you're enjoying the live video. I'm so happy to have you on, on our live tonight. All right, so let's clean all these guys because you know, I have to clean everything as I go. If you guys watch me at all, I'm constantly um, cleaning up my area because if I don't, like this big, huge desk becomes like the size of three inches by three inches with all the stuff I have on it. So I kind of, do it as I go or else I, I'll have a mess on my hands and I won't have any space to stamp or create or put anything together. And since the camera even shrinks my area even more, I really need to keep it nice and um, taken care of. I'm gonna bring the owl for the inside of our card out and I'm gonna show you the inside and we're gonna stamp that too, get all the stamping out of the way. So on the inside of our card, I chose to do um, a splatter and do the little flying owl in the corner. So let's move these guys out of the way and open our card to the inside. I'm gonna put a scrap paper in the corner cause we're gonna do our little flying owl and he is going to be an early espresso. And then we're gonna do our splatter dots from the perched in a tree set, which is what the branch came out of. So I'm gonna have my little guy flying right here in the corner. And then we're gonna put some splatters in starry sky. So I'm gonna stamp off because starry sky is super dark and I don't want too many and I don't want them covering him too much. So there we go, there's our splatter. And then we have to do the words, my friend, because the outside says, no matter the season, I'm here for you. And then the inside says, my friend. So let's see if I get this straight and not crooked. Hey, not too bad. <laughs> you never know. You never know with me, guys. I'm telling you. I could be messy. So let's go ahead and clean off these three stamps. That's all the stamping. Let's do some fun stuff. We're gonna do a little bit of coloring. Did you guys get to watch my coloring video? Hey, Lori, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Is it cold in Wisconsin?
All right, I'm gonna close my card. We don't need that part yet. I'm gonna move it out of the way temporarily. And if those of you who showed up late, you can catch the replay after the live is over. I will have it available on a replay. Let's start with our branch. And we're gonna use light soft suede. And we're gonna color that branch with the light soft suede. And I didn't want the dark on here. I didn't want it to be too dark, but I am gonna go back over these lines that the artist gave us, just kind of wiggle that same light soft suede over the top of those little lines right there. And his beak and his feet also are going to get the light soft suede. So we'll go ahead and do that now while I have it in my hand. For those of you who've never used Stampin' Blends, they're so fun to use. And I did do a video um, yesterday that shows you how to color the owls, different color ideas for them. And I did all three owls in the set, and here it is. So if you're interested in learning how to use the Stampin' Blends and how to shade and color the owls, I have a video on it on YouTube that you can catch at some point. For those of you who don't know, you can also share my videos to your Pinterest boards and then they'll always be there for you to find. Like you could make a board that says Inky Hands Videos to Watch and then go there and grab them when you need them. All right, so the only thing that on this owl that's going to be Starry Sky is the bow tie. So let's just get that part out of the way. So I'm going to use the light and dark Starry Sky. And I'm going to start with the light and I'm going to do the bow on him. He's so cute in his little bow tie. And then I'm going to darken the inner section near the knot, kind of where it would be tightened. So I'm gonna darken that section up right there. And then I'm gonna go back over that darkened section with the light to blend that in. And then after I'm done with the whole owl, I'm gonna lighten it a little more and I'm gonna show you how to use the color lifter to lighten that up. Yeah, I don't know about that cold, Lori. It's cold here. I'm in Virginia Beach, and it is cold here, almost already too cold. <laughs> okay, so we are going to use our dark crumb cake and our light soft suede together. So the soft suede is going to be my dark, and my dark crumb cake is going to be my light. Now, for those of you who don't know, you don't have to just use the light and dark of the same color. You can use two totally different colors and blend them together with these blends. That's what's so awesome about our Stampin' Blends. Have most of you who are watching used our Stampin' Blends? I'm gonna start with the darker color, which happens to be the light soft suede. And I'm gonna mark the parts that I want there to be a little bit of darkness or shadow for blending of our cute little owl. So I'm gonna do this top section and I'm gonna do up here by his head and we'll do this part of his ear. And then we're gonna do this, I call this part the apron, but we're gonna do this section here as well. And now I'm going to take my dark crumb cake and I'm going to shade that color that I just did and pull it down into the areas that are not colored. And that will blend that dark section of our owl right out like that and it gives you a nice contrast. As it dries, it's gonna lighten and you're gonna see the two tones. That's fantastic, Lori. Yep, that's where I am, Virginia Beach. That's so cool that you used to live here.
All right, so there is the apron. And now we're going to do the crumb cake. So I'm gonna keep the dark crumb cake. That's gonna become my dark color. And I'm gonna bring the light crumb cake in. And we're gonna blend these two colors together. So with the dark crumb cake, I'm gonna outline around the little owl's face. We're gonna come down here to the bow tie. We're gonna stop there. And then I'm gonna go around the other side and around here to his little beak. I'm not going to do around the eyes. I don't want that part darkened, but I am going to go under the beak here and join that area right there. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get his wings. Just like that. Next, we're going to take this and we're going to go around his little body here. And that's it for the dark crumb cake. Now we're going to lighten that up using the light crumb cake. So I'm going to start at the body because it's the smallest. I'm going to start at the wings here and I'm going to grab that color that's dark and I'm going to blend it out by pulling that dark color with my lighter blend color. I'm gonna pull it towards the area that has no color in it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna blend by going back and forth over that dark section of crumb cake. And I'm gonna blend that lighter one into it. And I'm gonna just draw that out so that you'll get the shading. If you'll notice on my finished piece, you get that shading, but you still see the light and it's not such a stark contrast, but it gives you some nice shading on your little owl. We're going to grab the um, color now from this wing, and we're gonna pull that dark crumb cake out and blend it out with the light. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the face. I'm also gonna add the light crumb cake to the inner ear area. So I'm gonna do that first. And now I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna blend that dark crumb cake, just like this, slowly, grabbing that color and blending it nicely around to the areas that don't have it. So I'm gonna grab this section here at the bottom and I'm gonna blend that out. Sorry for the squeakiness. <laughs> Sometimes Stampin' Blends get squeaky and then at other times they're not as squeaky. So I apologize for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this dark crumb cake and I'm gonna blend that out. And pull that color to the area that has no color. Same part right here, I'm gonna grab that and pull it to the area where there's no color. You just don't want, can you see the stark line there? And then you have the line that's been blended. So we wanna blend that stark line right out on that owl. So we're gonna pull that color down and work our way around his little eye. He's almost finished, isn't he cute? Oh my gosh, I love him. Now let me show you how cute we're gonna make his eyes. So I decided that I wanted balmy blue and light night of navy. And that's how I got that pretty eye color on him. So again, I'm using two colors completely unrelated. So I'm gonna start with dark balmy blue and I'm gonna color the entire eye area except for that little circle at the top which is kind of like the glint in his eye so there is the dark balmy blue eye now i'm going to take my darker color which is the light night of navy and i'm going to apply that just to the bottom section here of the eye and i'm going to leave that light balmy blue at the top and as this color blends and fits in, it's gonna become that color that you see on the left there. 
And that gives him, I think, a little bit of personality. The eyes are always the, the most personable parts, aren't they? So now the last step on him is I'm gonna take my color lifter and I'm gonna lighten that bow tie just a little bit. I'm gonna grab some of that color that's on there and blend it out with the colorless color lifter. And I like to purge it on scrap paper after I've pulled some of that color. And there is some of that color taken out. You can really see it well on the right side. I'm gonna work on the left side a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more there. There we go. So when it dries now, it's gonna have some tones on that bow tie as well. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna fussy cut our little owl out. Unfortunately, there's no dies for the owl, but he is free after all, so you can't complain, right? And he's really easy to cut out, actually. It's not that hard. It's almost like a circle that just has this little dip in right here in the middle. So it's not too much work. Have you all been to my website? <clears throat> I have, um, I do blog every day, even when I don't have a video. I definitely blog, so you can check out my blog. The only day that I have a late blog post is on Tuesdays because I blog on um, the night of the live. So my blog post goes live after my live is finished. So after this, I will have a blog post up. It'll have detailed pictures of the card. So if you ever want detailed pictures of something that I've made on YouTube, you can head on over to inkyhandswarmhearts.com. I know you guys can't see it right now, but when I bring the camera back up, you should be able to see it. And it's super simple, inky with a Y, I-N-K-Y, hands, plural, warm, hearts, plural, Dot com. And that's my website. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, I do send out a newsletter with specials as they come out. All right, so let's do our die cutting now. We've done our fussy cutting. We've done our stamping. We've done a lot of work. Let's cut these guys out. So I'm going to bring the camera back up. I Hopefully I don't make you dizzy. <laughs> and I'm going to bring that camera straight up. And we're going to bring our die cut machine into the camera. And we're going to die cut the branch and the words. I'm using the big guy this time. So it's the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're going to use our plate number one. That's our base plate. And then plate number two is anytime you're using steel dies, you need plate number two. It's kind of a shim. And then plate number three that's been well loved. You can see all the cutting I do on it. Now we're gonna place our projects on here. So we're gonna put our little um, branch. Let's get it ready. We'll lay it on here, do the best I can. Real live crafting guys, you know how I am. Sneezes, coughs, Jasper jumping up, doing crazy things, whatever it takes, but it's always real. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna put um, this really cool die right here and we're gonna die cut out the words, no matter the season, I'm here for you. I think that's a great sentiment. I like sending cards to my friends. Sometimes I just randomly send them cards. That's important, right? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to these and I'm gonna go ahead and crank this through the machine. And if there's any wiggle, I apologize, but sometimes, you know, you get a little wiggling going on. All right, I'm gonna move the machine out of the way and put the plates down. For the machine, you just push these sides up one at a time, just like that. 
we're gonna pull this piece off. And here is our sentiment. I'm gonna put that over here with the card. I always cut this stuff away and save my paper for the next time, you never know. And then we're gonna move that die and here's our branch, put that over there. I'm gonna put the dies here for right now. I'm gonna put them away before I lose them. But let me get this base out of the way and my die cut machine out of the way. We'll put those dies away and then we will start learning how to do the bow <clears throat> of this project. I don't know if you guys saw, but check out this cool bow in the corner. I'm gonna show you how to make that. When you use twine and linen thread, I think sometimes you just need a little extra something. And so I like to do really cool little bows with thinner ribbons and twines. And that's what I did today. Have you guys enjoyed my Valentine projects? I did one final one on Sunday. If you missed it, it's this one right here. I have a video for it. It's a candy bar wrapper. And again, because we started with our owls this week, starting on Sunday, it uses the adorable owls. Yes, it's a great bow. Oh guys, thank you so much for the nice comments. I'm gonna get these blends out of the way because we don't really need them right now, right? Okay, let's work on the bow. I'm gonna show you how to make the bow and then we'll put our whole card together. So we're gonna start with linen thread and I'm using the 2022 to 2024 in, co in color Baker's Twine Pack. Now that's a mouthful if you've ever said one. And this is the starry sky color that matches our paper. So I'm gonna grab my linen thread and my starry sky, and those are the two colors we're gonna use. So I'm gonna show you how I go about making this pretty cool ribbon. I'm gonna bring you guys back down again. All right, so let's start with the twine. I'm gonna move my card pieces out of the way so there's no distractions for us. Oh, thank you, Lori, I appreciate that. You have, Rita, which ones have you made? So we're gonna start with your hand, okay? And I start with a piece and I let it hang over my pinky finger. And you're gonna wrap around, I'm gonna do it three times. So this I'm counting as one, oops, two, three. And then once I have that third piece across, I'm gonna trim my twine where it hangs down. And then I'm gonna pull it off of my fingers and I'm gonna cinch it in the center with my, with my hands. You see I have a, a long piece hanging off here and a long piece hanging off there. I'm gonna wrap the one long piece, the last piece that went over. And as you can see, I'm making a loop by bringing it around. I'm gonna bring my end through that loop and I'm gonna pull it and that makes just a very loose knot right there. You can move it side to side. It slides around on you. So there's our linen thread portion of our cool bow. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the baker swine. So you get another shot at learning how to do it. So we're gonna let this piece dangle off of my hand. I'm gonna bring the camera up just slightly. I think I'm too far down and you're missing my hands. Let's see how that looks. Thank you, Clem. So you're gonna let this piece overhang and you're gonna wrap three times. So here, this is one, two, three. When you do your third one, you're gonna let this piece hang over and you're gonna trim it. And remember, you're gonna slide this off and there's your center. You're gonna take your end and you're gonna wrap it around. See when I do that, see how it makes this loop? I'm gonna catch that loop with this end and bring it through. And then we're just gonna slowly pull it. It's not gonna be a tight knot. It's actually a very loose knot, okay? And when you do that, 
You, it just secures it in place enough for you to stick it down onto your card, okay? So now we have these two pieces. This is our ribbon. So I'm gonna put this out of the way. I'm gonna put our twine back in our twine package and our linen thread back in our linen thread baggie. Get those out of the way and we're gonna assemble this little card together, okay? So let's get our pieces to the side. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this branch across this piece. Here's my card. Oh, thank you so much, Lori. You're gonna love it and it's really fun to have a bow like this on your card, I think. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our branch, we're gonna tuck, we're gonna glue this piece right here. So I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna grab my wet glue. Those of you who watch me know I love this wet glue. And I'm just gonna add just a little bit of it. It doesn't take much, just to these skinny tips of my branch. And I'm gonna glue that down right here along the bottom edge of my card, okay? Now you see the branch goes all the way across and I'm gonna let that just sit for a second and really set there. Now I'm gonna tuck it inside. I'm having that branch come out that hole that we've made with our die, okay? So now we're gonna put glue on this section of the branch that we colored and we're gonna let that stick to the back of our card, okay? And while it's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and put our dimensionals on the back. Now you guys that watch me know, I am a fan of dimensionals. And so if you don't put this many dimensionals on your card, I'm okay with it. As long as you're okay with me doing as many as I want. <laughs> but I don't like my card to fall in any way, shape or form. And dimensionals are so inexpensive. Like literally you get 300 dimensionals. Like, come on, just use them. <laughs> so I'm gonna put them here. I have a nice border all the way around. I am gonna take the small minis now, and as if that wasn't enough, I'm gonna put them across my branch in three spots. I'm gonna secure that piece right there. And then I'm gonna use a few minis to fill in the areas and around my circle because I don't want it to dip. Even around my circle, I don't want it to dip. So I'm gonna put two more up here. I know it's a lot of dimensionals, but you just have to deal with me and all the, and I'm still not done guys. So I'm gonna cut, <laughs> I'm gonna cut two more pieces from the edge of the leftovers of the mini dimensionals. You can see I love cutting them. <laughs> oh, Rita, I'm so excited that you made all of those. I'm so happy. I don't know if you know that I have a Facebook group, Rita. And if you would like to join it, it's called Kelly's VIP group. And Kelly is with an I. So you can find me on Facebook, it's a public group, and I would love for you to share the projects that you made. All right, so that's all the dimensionals for the moment. I still have to put them on the owl, so we're gonna leave those. The little owl's gonna get some dimensionals too. So we're gonna start with the large, and I'm gonna put two up here like near his eyes. I'm gonna put one down here on his belly, and then I'm gonna get two minis and I'm gonna put one on each wing. And that should be enough, I guess, except I might have to put one over here on the head. All right, that's not too bad for me. I mean, I really go all out with, the, with them. You know how I get. <laughs> now, on our piece right here, we're gonna trim this down. I don't want the corner to be, um, Forked. I want it to be straight. So I'm actually gonna grab my mini um, guillotine cutter and I'm just gonna stick this right there and trim that tiny bit off of this. 
And then this is also going to get dimensionals. And if I didn't put enough on my card backing, wait till you see how many I put on this. But I mean, it's a wide label. It needs a lot of them. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna put two minis on those pointed pieces. And then I need one more for stability back here. And then of course I have to put another one right here because it just looks weird to me without those. So don't mind me and all my embellish, all my dimensionals. <laughs> all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull them off of our starry sky backing. So let's get my take your pick tool. For those of you who know me, you know that I love this take your pick tool. Best 10 bucks you'll ever spend. <laughs> That and the snips, I'm going to bring you up just slightly so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I wish they did too, Rita. You don't know how many of those I could sell, but it was a promotion when I joined Stampin' Up. I got it for free. It was part of my kit. All right, so I'm going to take my um, Take Your Pick tool. I'm using the pointy end, and I'm going to pull the backs off of these dimensionals. I'm gonna start with the big ones on this bottom quadrant. I like to do about five or six at a time and then I purge them off of my um, take your pick tool. So we'll do this set of five right here. And we'll purge those. And then, I mean, I know you guys aren't counting how many dimensionals I put on the back of here because then you might not be able to be my friend. <laughs> Don't dimensional shame me. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with my 500 billion dimensionals. Two more and we'll, we'll be able to stick this piece down. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere it. Look at how cool that looks just by itself on there. But we're gonna adhere our iridescent Wink of Stella night sky onto our card. I'm actually gonna stand up, I'm sitting right now, but. I think I need to see overhead like you guys are seeing, and I can't do it as well when I'm sitting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this down. I want to have a really nice border all the way around, and there will be a smidge of white all the way around, which is the point of me raising this up. So when you rotate it, you see that little bit of white all the way around that circle. <laughs> Lou. <laughs> All right, so this piece is going to go next, but first let's put our little owl on there. So we're going to pull those off. Let's get all of these guys at the same time. All right, and we're going to stick our little owl onto his branch. So let's move this out of the way. How cute is he sitting on the branch? Oh my gosh, I love him. Our next piece is going to be our words, okay? But now I don't want to stick them down until I have used our really cool bows that we made. So I'm gonna grab a mini dimensional, or I'm not dimensional, mini glue dot, and we are gonna pull these off, okay? And first, we're going to put this darker blue one. I'm going to figure out where I want it. I need it to fall right about there, so I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to put that under that knot. And then I'm going to slide it right over the top. That will hold that one in place. Let's grab another one. You see how much I use this Take Your Pick tool? If you don't own one of these... Buy that next because I'm telling you, I use this tool so much. And again, I'm going to let those two little loops hang and I'm going to stick this one right there over the top. All right, let's pull the backs off of our stylish shape banner. I pull my backs off this way because they stay stuck on the tip until I throw them in the trash can and they don't end up all over 
my craft room. All right, here we go. We're gonna take this piece and we're gonna cover that section. So we wanna make sure that we're nice and straight. And we're gonna place this right there. Look at how cool that bow is. I'm in love with it. Okay, and the final step, we're gonna use iridescent pearl basic jewels. So we have to add some iridescence because we have that wink of Stella on there. And you probably didn't notice these guys on here, but if you were here in person, even though they're small, you can see them because they're dimensional, obviously. They stick up, but they add a little bit of stars that are three-dimensional to our cool sky. So I'm gonna put them wherever I see kind of openings where there's not too much stars because I do want them to show. And I want one in the inner section here. So I'm gonna put this one right here next to that guy. So cute he is with his bow tie. For those of you who missed me stamping the inside, let me open it so that you guys can see that I put a little flying owl and the word my friend. And these splatter dots are from the perched in a tree. I'll show you that stamp set in a minute. So it says, no matter the season, I'm here for you, my friend. So that is our project today. I absolutely, positively love it. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the camera back up because I want you guys to see the whole surface here. And I'm gonna bring the stamp sets back out that we used. So we used Adorable Owls. I'm using it all week. I used Perched in a Tree and the dies that match. And I used Stylish Shapes because if you don't own this set and you watch me, eventually you're gonna have to buy it because I use it so much. <laughs> so those are the two, um, the, the stamp set and dies and then this extra set of dies. Just work your way through the shape dies because guys, you gotta have them, they're so cool. Does anybody have any questions before I let you go? I really enjoyed making this project with you guys. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lee. And you'll be able to see the project a lot closer. I have some close-up photos on the blog post, so you can go to inkyhandswarmhearts.com. That's also where you shop is inkyhandswarmhearts.com. You click on shop with me so that you can purchase things from me on my online store. I do appreciate people who purchase from me. I appreciate your support, whether you comment, whether you like my videos, share them, um, all of those help. So thank you for being here. And I really appreciate it. You guys have an awesome night. If there's no questions, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to share the video with your friends. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you've missed my Valentine projects, just scroll back a few videos, and I had 14 days of Valentine projects. Thanks for being here, guys. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. As always, happy stamping. <laughs>